In the movie, there's a car chase, secrets in the movie, and I had done a, a car chase in the town that I really liked, and I wanted to try something different. Let's go. It felt like I was shooting an old-time gangster movie, which was great. Once you put all those little pieces together, that's how we actually started to figure out well, how we could construct it. The car chase in Lawrence, that's I think one of the best I've ever seen. It's just literally a car chase with a lot of action and obviously a number of different streets. Where we're going for something that's real. And it was a grounded action scene, not something where cars are flying through the air and doing things that are physically impossible. So you start at a bank and then you need to get chased through the town. And then you have to make an escape into a place where you're gonna end up in a burning woods. I went back and looked at all the classic Model A chases and stuff like that and tried to find the cool moments in those and then come up with our own as well. The car chase in general is a plotted plan of where everything goes and we're getting the character into it as it moves along. We had two storyboard artists working to come up with the idea of how to make the chase function at the highest level it could. There was actually three sets of storyboards because they started this project a, a while back. And then the third set of storyboards came from Bob, which were great, the more about the camera moves and the feelings of actors. Well, I looked at it and tried to figure out how it worked practically, is how the cars did what they did and how they ended up in certain positions and started doing that. It was a complicated sequence. We didn't have a great deal of space. The car chase was almost down to the shot. This was one of the first things we had to shoot. We had to make more of the space than was actually there. We kind of mashed them together and told the story. Using these old cars was definitely a challenge to make it as gripping and visceral as it could possibly be. Fury cars don't start. They're not reliable. I don't recommend buying a car from the 1920s. They all had these the secret mojo handshakes ways you had to start the car and the thing ways to keep it going. But you wanted to feel like they were traveling at a high speed. They have 18 horsepower and they're next to impossible to drive. I think when you're traveling at 20 miles an hour, it's a vast difference from when you travel at 40 or 50 miles an hour. So the need for speed is vital. But we rebuilt all the cars. Uh, we built new cars with old bodies. And they built a complete frame, motor, running gears, steering, braking, everything underneath them, and just put the old body on top. So that we could have something that felt tense when we were getting chased. That really helped us to be able to slide them and do what we wanted to do. I didn't want it to feel like the world's slowest car chase scene. The buggy one is the most complicated one. That was a hard one for me, because I actually sat on the car shooting Ben while he was driving him at a rapid pace. And they were able to shoot Ben in that car. Such a great opportunity, because you're not cutting to just a head in a car. Be able to use wider shots where you see your star in the car. You're actually along for the ride with him, rather than sitting back and watching a story unfold in front of you, you're involved. Other shots are, of course, were almost handheld in the car beside, or mounted on the outside. It's the ultimate arm. It's a remote head on a crane, on a Porsche, generally. You sit inside and you control. The crane itself can do a 360, and it can drop or a raise in height. So action scenes always have pitfalls. There's always something you don't get, or too much of one thing and not enough of another. For the sequence, which I guess is around four minutes, I suppose there was probably five hours of footage. When I first got the footage, I was told that I was going to get an exterior of that T-bone, because Joe's sort of distracted. Ben had decided, let's play it from Joe's point of view. You see the car coming through Joe's window right at him, and it's much more visceral. You don't see the actual impact, but you feel it, and you see the car. If you're with the character, you don't need that sort of big objective shot. Really cut a great scene. I just shot shots. Every good action scene to me, the two elements that are most important is they have a story and that they're personal to the characters. 
I don't think he wanted to really be involved with a violent act. I think he was thrown into it. And because of circumstances, it escalated and got out of his control. He's distracted by this love for this woman, and he's looking to the future, and it ends up getting him in trouble. I've got ammo on my mind, and I'm not really thinking about where I'm putting the gear in. Let's go. What are you doing? And what are you thinking about? Forget about the dame. We also noticed that he doesn't shoot anybody. He never pulls a weapon out the entire time, which is a rather remarkable concept that a bank robber doesn't shoot. Found Dion to be kind of acting out the violence so Joe doesn't have to. He's just a loose cannon. When in doubt, he reacts violently. He doesn't think about it, he just pulls the guns and starts shooting at people. There's a lot going on in a very small space. The road was just big enough for one car really to go by or down it. You know, I think the best composers are storytellers, and I think Harry did a great job of giving the scene dynamic range with the score. The cue starts with a bunch of low woodwinds, which I don't normally even hire. Oversized bassoon, which is the contrabassoon, the oversized clarinet, which is the bass clarinet. Go, um, pop, um, pop, um, pop, um, pop, um, pop. I have a lot of brass punctuating. Bah, 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 bah. There's something specific about the sound. I'm at a loss as to how to explain what that is. It has a whiff of something that's past. I just wanted to put the audience in the shoes of the characters and have them be as, as frightened and as feeling under siege as the characters were. Because I think that's all our job, is we're trying to be good storytellers. That's what we all strive for, to give him how he wrote it. I want to make Ben happy, obviously. I knew what I wanted to accomplish. I knew what Ben wanted to accomplish. I think this seems fantastic, so I'm going to say we all did. Yeah.